No matter where we have been and what we have gone through, God calls and welcomes us in the spirit of God's gracious welcome. I extend a warm welcome to all on behalf of Trinity United Church in Kitchener, Ontario. Wherever you are, whatever you are going through, we are happy that we can worship together. I pray that we can all find meaningful connections as we are drawn together by love. God, whose love is reigning o'er us. Voices United 399. of worship, we come to offer ourselves to God, who in our moments of fear and anxiety leads us to calmness and peace. We come to hear God, who in our moments of confusion brings clarity and purpose to our lives. We come into the presence of God who in all our moments and through the changing scenes of our lives is with us. Let us worship God who loves and renews us. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we gather in worship, and when we go about our daily lives, teach us to listen. 
to listen with patience when we want immediate answers. To listen with openness to a new word when we are more comfortable with the old. To listen with deep respect for the roots of our faith when we would prefer the new and the trendy. Teach us to hear your voice in stillness and silence. To hear a renewed call to return, even when this means hard, incompatible work. Help us to listen with faithfulness, knowing that your voice can come in unexpected places and through unlikely people and means. And listening, O God, give us courage to act. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. My friends, I am happy to be back and to share in worship with you. My time off has been marked by high and low moments. As many of you know, I lost my younger brother who lived in Guyana. It was painful for us as a family, but we got through it thanks to the love and support that we received. I take this opportunity to thank all of you for your expressions of condolence, support, and for your prayers. Here we are, as God's people, looking to what is ahead, as we continue to journey through what has been a long period of uncertainty. We are grateful for all the signs of hope that we see. We are grateful for everyone and everything that has encouraged and sustained us. We are grateful for the enriching new things that we have learned and embraced and for the enduring things that we have rediscovered and come to appreciate even more. We give thanks for the relationships that bring joy and meaning to our lives. It has been difficult over the past several months, but we have been reminded that life's journey is not always easy or smooth. But when we approach our challenges together and with love, we will find our way through. And so as we move into life, into what is ahead for us, let us embrace the new and the familiar with gratitude for the sustaining grace of our God, who is always with us. In you, there is a refuge. More voices, number 84. Thank you.
Our scripture reading for today will be taken from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 37. Our readings from Mark for today. The first reading is about the Syrophoenician woman's faith. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. 
He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even if the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. The second part of our reading is about Jesus curing a deaf man. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee and the region of Decapolis. They brought him to a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epha, Epha, Thatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well, he even makes the deaf to hear, and the mute to speak. God still speaks. Thanks be to God. We cannot measure how you heal. Voices United 613. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for continuing to speak to us. 
words to encourage us when we feel down and frustrated, when we are fearful and anxious, words of love when we need to be comforted, and word of, words of challenge when we need to move on to what is new, into that which is unknown, but that to which you are leading. As we help us, O God, to listen as you speak to us, we open our hearts to receive. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. In many ways, and for many reasons, what Jesus said to this mother in this story recorded in our Gospel reading today, it is difficult to hear what he said. Coming from anyone else with the intolerance and prejudices that are so common in our societies today, it would be considered a very mean and demeaning thing to say. And coming from Jesus, it sounds particularly harsh and jarring because it is certainly not the sort of response we expect from nor associate with Jesus. This was a mother experiencing the worst pain any mother can experience. The pain of seeing her child, whom she dearly loved, being destroyed before her eyes and being helpless to stop it. This was not a woman who came arrogantly demanding anything. This was a mother who came bowing at Jesus' feet, humbly asking for help for her child. And in a response that seems to be lacking in the characteristic grace, compassion, and graciousness which we associate with Jesus, Jesus said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. As we would say, that was cold. But amazingly, the woman did not appear to have been offended by Jesus' response. In fact, she seemed to have been unfazed by what he said. Now let's take a pause for a moment and put ourselves in the place of that woman. How would you feel if someone were to respond to your humble, sincere request for help in that manner? Which one of you would not have been seriously offended to have your child likened to a dog? Now you and I know how easy it is for persons to feel offended even in the church, or maybe I should say especially in the church. 
We get offended for little things. How much more offended will we not be if our plea for help were to be rejected in such a cold and callous way? What prompted Jesus to respond in that way? And why wasn't the woman outraged by his response? Was she desperate or afraid? But I guess the more important question, well, I should say maybe those are important questions. But the question I want to focus on today is this. Should such a story have a place in the Gospels? Does it not undermine the very love and compassion and grace of which Jesus himself speaks? It is without doubt a difficult story on several levels. But it is an important story for all of us. It is a story that speaks to an unpalatable truth that we often don't want to acknowledge. It is also a story that points to a blessed assurance that holds out a generous and glorious hope for all of us. Both Jesus and that woman were living in a real world. And there were real issues that they both had to face. Issues that defined a person's existence and determined how they were treated. Here in this story, the woman was not defined by her humanity. She was defined by her ethnicity. The help she deserved was not determined by her need, but by her nationality. The story says she was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. People assumed the Jews did not get along. And since she was not a Jew, hence the way Christ responded to her. Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Now, I don't think that Jesus was calling the woman a dog. I don't think that Jesus was, was saying that she and her people were of a lower class and a lower status. I don't think that Jesus was practicing or promoting discrimination, racism, sexism, or any other ism. Why then did he say such a mean or seemingly mean and demeaning thing. I think that Jesus was drawing attention to the reality that the woman experienced each day. The reality that she lived in a divided world, a world of them and us, a world divided along the lines of race and ethnicity, gender and class, faith and ideology. It was her reality then, and my friends, it's our reality now. Like hers, ours is a world where our common humanity is often overlooked and our superficial differences are inflated and elevated. A world where, for some, 
it does not count for much that we are all human beings made in the image of God. What matters is the color of our skin and the texture of our hair, the language we speak and where we are born, the face to which we subscribe. A world where for some, it does not matter that all are equal in the sight of God. What matters is the size of our bank account, the position we hold in life, and the influence that we wield. When Jesus said to the woman, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, I don't think for one moment that he was expressing a personal dislike for the woman or her child. I think he was merely reflecting the position of, this, of this, the society. One of which the woman, no doubt, would have been fully and painfully aware because that was her reality. And my friends, that is our reality as well. We see from this story what the woman's response was. Now it is time for us to examine our response to that same reality. What do we do? What do we do when we are confronted by that attitude that pits one people against another. What do we do? Do we throw up our hands in despair and resign ourselves to life as it is? Believing that some barriers cannot be removed or overcome? Do we walk away in silence because it doesn't affect us? It's not our problem. Or do we get angry and allow that anger to consume us? When Jesus said, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, that mother could have stormed away in anger, vowing never to have anything else to do with Jesus. She could have walked away and never come back, as many of us might have been inclined to do. She could have retreated quietly in shame and returned to her home and watched helplessly and in pain as her daughter was destroyed. But she did not do any of that. In a display of tremendous strength and courage, she confidently replied, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. I see that as great courage and strength and faith, and determination. What she is saying in other words is, I am not asking you to deprive others so that I can gain. I am not asking that others be made poorer so that I and my daughter's life can be made better. All I am asking for is that which is there for me. Even the dogs have a place. All I'm asking for is my place at the table, at your table. And Jesus said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon 
has left your daughter. The demon has left your daughter. By setting her daughter free from that which was destroying her, he confirmed that the mother had got it right. And that she and her daughter, like everyone else, has a place at God's table. Has a place in God's world. In God's purpose. Now Mark begins this story by telling us a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, heard about Jesus, and she came and bowed down at his feet. She heard, and she went in search of Jesus. Now, my friends, as we go through our own stories, our own pain, our own moments of desperation and despair. Let us hear that word of grace and compassion that comes to us from God. And when we hear that word, having heard that word, let us turn to God who accepts us with love. There is a place at God's table for all of us. That is the word of grace and compassion that we all need to hear today. There is a place at God's table, a place in God's world for all of us, in whatever situation we find ourselves. And let us come, come, come to God knowing that we will not be turned away, whoever we are. But it does not stop there. We need to hear and receive that assurance not only for ourselves, but for others as well. We need to hear it. And when we hear that word of assurance, to make room for others too. We need to hear that and help others to come into that which God offers. In a world of them and us, God would have us to know that there is a place for all at God's table, in God's world, and in God's kingdom. That, my friends, is our comfort. And that is also our commission. To live into that every day. And to share that with others. And I trust God that when we are made to believe that we don't belong, that we will know that we are God's and that we have a place in God's world and in God's purpose. Thanks be to God. Oh, for a world, Voices United 697.
us to stand with praise. Oh, for a world where goods are shared and miseries relieved, where truth is spoken, children spared, equality achieved. We welcome one world family and struggle with each choice that opens us to unity and gives our vision voice. The poor are rich, the weak are strong, the foolish ones are wise. Tell all who mourn and outcasts belong, who perishes will rise. Oh, for a world preparing for God's glorious reign of peace, where time and tears will be no more, and all but love will cease. Let us pray. Good and generous God, in Jesus you came to us, promising life in abundance. We give you thanks today for the abundant gifts we receive in Christ, the assurance of your love day by day, the relief of your mercy when we recognize our own failings. Hope to sustain us when things seem bleak. And the peace that comes when we entrust ourselves to your love. For all these gifts and all the other blessings that we recognize around us, we give you thanks. Compassionate God, we pray for all whose lives are empty of joy and peace because the going is tough and friends seem far away. We pray for those whose hearts are filled with disappointment and anxiety because their sorrow and grief are great. Support each one, we pray in your abundant compassion. And gracious God, we remember before you those whose lives are empty of hope because they are struggling with illness or disability, because they are powerless in the face of violence and other forces beyond their control. Confirm your promise of renewal with signs of new possibility a real change. And good and generous God, fill us with energy and compassion to reach out to those facing difficult times. May we become to others the gift of love and compassion we have received in Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Voices United 288. Thank you. 
Let us go out with joy, awakened to the treasure within and around us, to bring transformation, challenge, and hope to the world. And may the abundant blessings of God, source, Savior, and Spirit be ours today and always. And until we meet again, God bless us, each and every one. Amen.